and that all the time. Busy is killing us. Um, literally. Stress um, is killing our families. We are valuing getting places rather than the people. Um, we are so busy that our lives are literally shorter. Um, but even if they're not shorter because we maintain life, the truth is we're not enjoying the days that we have. And so I hope that through this series, even if your schedule does not change at all, maybe your schedule will be exactly the same at the end of the series, my hope is that you'll find joy in the very things that you were flustered about, the very things that you were irritated about, because I want you to learn how to spend time with God and spend time with people. And it's really about priorities, you know. Um, and here's what I think happens. This is kind of what we're going to deal with today and deal with this in the series. Because we're afraid of certain things, it causes us to do other things. And because we're doing those things, we're pushing through life and we're not enjoying life. Um, it's, you know, life is not a destination. If you're, if you're just waiting till you retire, quit that. Uh, people who retire, if you're telling, if you're one of these retired people that's saying to me, I'm busier than I've ever been, let me just stop it. Whatever you're doing that's causing you to be as busy as you've ever been, don't, well, I, I don't know how to tell you, stop it. Because the truth is, in the middle of all our busyness, we have to enjoy life. Don't you know that life can go like this? Your kids are born, so you're too busy just trying to get sleep. Right? <laughs> and, and, and so the kids get born, and you're, you're trying to feed them, and you're trying to keep them alive, right? And, and so you're up half the night and everything, and then what happens? They, they get a little older, and they're, they're toddling, and so then you're trying to keep them out of stuff, right? right? And then they grow a little older, and they start to become defiant, so now you're just trying to keep from killing them, right? And, you know, right? and so you kind of go through that stage of life, but you're too busy to do anything. You're too busy to help you, and you're just kind of rushing through, and, you're, and then they get a little older, and you're taking them everywhere. And, and if people, if spacemen were to look at our lives, they would think that our main goal in life was to get from one place to the other. And so we do that period of life, which then lasts till they're 18, and then and then they move out, hopefully, and and, and, and start to you know start to do other things, and then they move back in, right? You know how that works. And, and, and but what we do is then and then we say, well, I'm I'm too tired to help. I'm too tired to do. And by the time we're done with the journey, we haven't really done the important. We just survived, and we just pushed through. Now, I don't know about you, I grew up in Miami. In Miami, we had long traffic lines, and traffic was a big frustration. So I was on the way to church this morning, I was running a little behind, so I got stopped at one of the lights. I got stopped at every light today, by the way. I'm pretty sure every single light stopped me. And just so you know, there were three sheriff's officers on US-1, and I did not get pulled over, which means I was not speeding enough. And so, um, so, all the people from the Grove were just passing me from Titus Hill's Fort St. John. But anyway, so I see Grove stickers just flying in. I'm sorry. I'm going to call. I'm going to text Mary later. Anyway, so and my, those are my buddies up in Titus Hill. Anyway, so, um, so I said I sent the one line next to the Social Security office on US-1, and I, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to see how long this light is. It feels like forever. <laughs> I literally stopped in the light when it turned red, like, you know, one of those. And so I... How long do you think it was? You ready for this? 20 seconds. It was 20 seconds. You know how many times I sat there? It's like an hour. It's 20 seconds. Can I tell you what you can do in 20 seconds? I love you to your kids. I don't have anybody in the car. So it's weird for me to say that. But let's do this. You can thank God for the tune on the radio. And we get so busy, what do we do? We push through, and we think everything is attacking us, and we feel this pressure that so often is not from without. It's from within. And so life is about fear of faith. And so today we're going to look at how fear can make us want stuff or want to be in on everything, so we stay busy um, DVRing everything and trying to watch everything or go to everything or to gather things. Um, sometimes it's, we don't want to be seen as lazy because we want to be valuable. So we're trying to find our value. Um, sometimes we're trying to just please other people. And then other times we just stay busy because that's what we've done. And we don't know what else to do, so we just push through. Now, those of you know, I just got off my honeymoon a few days ago, and I found this story about a German man. 
he and his wife um, drove from Germany uh, to France for their honeymoon on the Autobahn, which sounds awesome to me. You know, so you know, anyway, so I um, so so he drove. They drove to France, and on their way home, uh, they were coming home. And uh, his wife fell asleep in the back of the minivan, and he stopped to get gas. So I want to read the article, because I think the article says it so much better than I could. So, uh, in 2013, um, the couple were on their way home from Berlin after honeymooning in France, when the husband pulled over to refuel in central Germany, so they were a long way from home still. While he was at the pump, his bride went inside to use the restroom until he said Friday. Because she had been sleeping in the back of the minivan, the man did not notice she was gone. So he drove for 125 miles and more than two hours, bopping out the music. I'm not sure why they put that in there, but I thought that was hilarious. Before he realized his wife was no longer in the back. Now, I love this. This is the wife's quote. Okay, so man, this is going to help you out. I'm going to help all of you out today. It says this, my first reaction was, is he stupid? I'm going to take a time out right there. Wives, let me just help you get this out of the way. You know, I know that they were just newly married, so maybe she didn't know yet. So, so for those of you who are dating, and you know, maybe you're young and you're thinking, I'm going to marry the smartest man in the world. No, you're not. Just get over. Yes, he's stupid. Just know that there are times that there's no excuse. It's just, there it is. Okay, so just get over it. Love him anyway. Boy, he's dumb, but I love him. All right, so there you go. The woman told the German radio station, listen to this, though. I had no money and no phone at a gas station. Like the worst place. I mean, I'm doubting this is Wawa. <laughs> okay? So I had no money and no phone, but somehow she was able to contact police, which I find funny. Of course she was able to. She was left alone at a gas station. So what do you think she went in? She went into the clerk and said, my husband left me. My brand new husband. And I'm sure they were dying. They probably went in the back and died and came back out. Anyway. <laughs> The couple were reunited, you ready for this? Five hours later, but this is the worst part, ready? At the gas station. The woman spent five hours, all I can imagine is one of those gas stations where they hand you the key, you know, the key with like a spare tire on it, because you know, and then you go in there, and it looks like no one has ever cleaned it, right? And there's things growing in. I just imagine it's one of those gas stations, like no convenience store. It's, you know, the guy's got some Cheetos that are six years old sitting on the thing. Five hours waiting for him. But somehow she was able to contact police. Here's what she said. I'm not angry with my husband, she said. He didn't mean it. And then the, the author in the article says, we hope that their first anniversary is better than your honeymoon. <laughs> so, well, can you even imagine? But what happened? He got so busy trying to do the task that he didn't take care of the person. If you're not careful, you will get so busy doing the tasks of life, the things of life, the, the, the things that you're to do list, you're getting here, all the things that you will not enjoy the journey won't take care of the people that are with you on the journey. Just not on purpose. Not on purpose. She said he wasn't mad because it wasn't on purpose. But the truth is we do this with all kinds of things. So, so here's why. Let's start with number one. The reasons why we stay busy is because we think more is better. See, we fear missing out on something. So, or we fear not having something. Or maybe there's going to be a lack. So we feel like we have to have it. Or, you know, we feel we're going to miss out on a TV show or I don't know if you've ever binge watched on Netflix. It's a sin. And, uh, but, um, but I've done it. So what happens is you, you, you push play on the, on the Netflix thing, and it's you know 8 o'clock at night, and you push play, and then you watch the first of a series, and you're like, wow, I've never seen this. It's really good. And they leave you hanging. Then you watch number two, and little did you know there's 42 episodes, and about 4 o'clock in the morning, you go, oh my gosh, I need to go to bed. After one more episode. And, and right? And, and right? And you don't want to miss out. So we stress ourselves out. And the next day we're like, why am I tired? Because I've watched this show. And then, you know, we're afraid we're going to miss out. We want to be in on the conversation. We want to be able to, to know things. And so we're reading and we're Facebooking and we're receiving data all, and we don't want to miss out. So we just collect all this information. And yet we're not enjoying our lives. Listen to what Jesus said. 
told him a parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I'll store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. And you thought the Vikings said this, but it was Jesus. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? Now, here's the most important sentence. We miss this sentence all the time. See, we think this story is about stuff. It's not about stuff. It's about priorities. It's not about building a barn. We think this is about, well, I can't have a storage place. That's not what it is. We can't have a garage. No, that's not what this is about. Listen to what it says. This is how it will be for uh, with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich towards God. So if you go through your life and you're selfish and self-centered, then you will get to the end of your life without joy. And you will get to the end of your life without blessing somebody. And you'll get to the end of your life and you'll realize that you just wasted your time building barns that you never even got to use. And so Jesus is warning them, listen, don't just spend your life about stuff and about more. Be rich towards God. Ask God, God, what do you want me to do? It's not about running after stuff. You know, when I was in uh, uh, South Florida, uh, one of the things I've forgotten, you know, when you go to South Florida, all of a sudden you see these four dollars dollars cars driving around. And you think, you know, would I ever buy one of those cars? Yes. No, I mean, um, you know, would I ever? But then you think, but then you think, how much time does that person spend at work to do that? Would I, would I be willing to sacrifice time with my family? You know, I think of students who, you know, immediately they turn 16 and they want a car right away, right? And so, and so they go to these little car dealers, and that car dealer will give them a loan uh, if they get a job. So they go get a job so they can buy a car so they can get places, right? And then once they have the car, they realize there's insurance and gas and oil. And by the time they realize it, before they ever know it, what are they doing? They're buying a car so they can get to work to pay for the car so that they can get to work so they can go home. And then they're too tired to go out and do anything else. So then they take their car back to work, and their parents send them to the grocery store. And so, right? And so what happens when we get on the little, the little habit trail wheel? We're just, we're just going. We're just, and we start it early, and we get on there, and we, some of us, 40, 50 years old, and you haven't taken time to just say, why do, you, why do I act that way in the car? Why don't I enjoy the moments? Why am I always worried about work? Why am I always worried about these people? We have fear. First Timothy says this way, Paul says, command those who are rich in this present world, by the way, he would be talking to all Americans, command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant or put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but put their hope in, what's the next word? Put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Wait, 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 time out, time out. Did you hear that last part of that verse? God provided everything for your enjoyment. Do you know when we notice our car? When it breaks. Do you notice when we notice the air conditioner or heat in this room? When we're uncomfortable. By the way, air's on this side, heat's on this side, it's really exciting. <laughs> so, so here's the truth. We spend our lives so much just trying to push ahead that we don't enjoy. I want to challenge you, if you don't do anything else today with this sermon, if you're going to nap after this part of the sermon and you're thinking, Eric, you're not even through point one, are you ever going to finish? Yes, I will, don't worry. But, but here's the truth. I encourage you to enjoy today. When you're eating today, you ready? Stop for just a second. Look at what's on your fork. Put it slowly in your mouth. I don't care if it says mc something on it. <laughs> you know, we're eating in our cars. We're eating standing up. We don't even take time to sit down. Take a few moments to enjoy what God has provided for you. You're in an air-conditioned room sitting around people who love you and care about you from the 
not so much. But that's okay. Right? And yet we get so focused on other things that we can't even enjoy the moment that we're in. Enjoy the moment you're in. If you're not feeling well, it's okay. Did you know you can enjoy a moment you don't feel well? When I was in the hospital, I remember looking out the window and seeing the light off the buildings in Orlando as I could not even get out of the bed. IVs in both arms. They had to do uh, uh, thick splines in my arms and in this arm and run IVs on both sides. Full IVs. And I remember looking out the window seeing the light off the buildings in Orlando and saying, God, thank you for the sunset. You can be thankful with anything. You can enjoy life even when life is difficult. God did. So it says, everything for our enjoyment. And then it says this, command those to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and be generous and willing to share. Why? Because let me tell you something about life. If life is all about you, you will be miserable. You'll be like that spoiled child who you take to a restaurant and nothing is good enough. Don't let that be you every day. Is it good enough for you? Can you be thankful? Can you be grateful in the middle of what's going on and say, God, I want to enjoy this? And then it says, listen, so it's the idea of do, doing good to others. To realize when you're on this journey, there are people around you. Be a blessing to them. Bless them. So, so here's a question for you. And it talks about can you, give, can you faith God for what you need? Is your busy life crowding out into the important things? Are you so busy living and going to work that you haven't taken time to enjoy the moments? Now, here's a few tips for you, okay? If you're a parent especially, but also just in life. Plan your week. As much as I love all my electronics, I actually have, believe it or not, a paper calendar. I know, I'm old school. People make fun of me. I don't care. Because I want to know what's coming up and what I have to do. And I can look ahead. When somebody says to me, can we do this on this day? I can look at it and see, if I don't plan my week, nothing happens. You know what you might want to do? Even put something in your calendar. I have, um, every other week on Thursdays, I have a little thing that dings that reminds me to call two of my pastor friends. So I check on them. So I usually text them on that Thursday. Now, they don't know that I put something in my calendar to do it. Why do I do it? Because it's priority to me to build relationships. So I go in there. It also reminds me to check on my Sunday school grades. But that's another story. Um, so plan your week, whether it's personal or home. Plan some special time. Plan 10 minutes to do something special. Then number two, make a list. When you make that to-do list, try to do the hardest thing first. You'll find that you'll enjoy life more if you get that hard thing out of the way with it. So, for example, for a lot of us, it's, it's doing bills. We have that bill time. Anybody in here enjoy doing bills? You just love to write those checks? Yes. Come to my house. So, all right? So, nobody does, right? So, when you make your list, do, get that out of the way. Why? So, you can enjoy even some of the mundane. Did you know you can enjoy mopping floors? You know how I know? Because I like mopping floors. I'm making sure you can. I'll come to your house and mop your floors. Make a list. Do the hardest thing first. Hey, you ready for this? This is whether you're this is whether you're single or have 14 kids at the house. And by the way, if you're single, here's what I've learned. This actually helps you to focus better. Plan your meals for the week. So if you're single, that may even be planning one night that you're going to go out with somebody. If you have kids, listen, I'm going to make your life easy. You're like, well, it's too hard to plan. Tuesday, tacos. That's all you need to remember. I don't care what's going on in your life. It's tacos. If kids say, I'm tired of tacos, you, what you do is you put the shells on the table and you say, it's fajita night, but we use ground beef. <laughs> Salt, pepper, tacos, you guys. All right. Plan your meals for the week. It'll change your life. It'll change your life. And like I said, even if you're single and you plan your meals, it'll give you something to look forward to. If you're single, I encourage you to put a plate on the table. Don't eat standing up at the stove. Sit down and enjoy your food. If you're married or with a family, don't get so busy on your phone at all. Take that time and protect it and enjoy it. Enjoy it. If you haven't enjoyed your food lately, you need to Google how to cook. You can figure it out, okay? <laughs> as much as you can, prepay your bills. That'll help you. All right. So more is better. Number two, we don't want to be lazy. And by the way, that's just our excuse. The truth is we want to feel needed. So we do a bunch of stuff so we feel like we're important or like we matter. We're afraid if we don't do it and they don't need us. So, we, so out of fear, we do more than we should. 
In Ecclesiastes 10.18, um, this is new century. If someone is lazy, the roof will begin to fall. If he doesn't fix it, the house will leak. Now, we all know those people. Everybody knows that person who does not take care of their own house. Everybody knows that person who never changes the oil in their car, and then the car blows up, right? Everybody knows that person. And so sometimes we don't want to be that person, but if we're honest about it, the truth is we're actually doing more than just fixing the roof. We're adding three new roofs and four new rooms there because we feel like we just have to have this accumulation and moving, and we've got to keep going, and we want to be needed, and we want to be valued. We're driven to succeed. Gary Smalley talks about this idea of being driven to succeed. Now, Gary Smalley, if you don't know, is a relationship like expert. He does marriage counseling, he's a counselor, and he's phenomenal. He's written all kinds of books. In one of his books, I was really surprised he admitted it. He went salmon fishing with his son. And I don't know if you know anything about salmon fishing, but it's in cold rivers, you wear waders, and you go. And as he was taking his son down the river, his son, who I think was about 10 years old this time, his son slipped and fell and hit his arm and started crying. And, but the fish were biting. And Gary Smalley looked at his son and said, just keep it in the cold water, I'll be right back. And he went down the river a little farther, fished for an hour, came back, and then realized that his son's arm was broken and he was devastated. Now listen, as goofy as that sounds, the truth is, we have people around us with broken hearts, we have people that we say rude things to, that we hurt a meaning, we don't mean to hurt them and we hurt them, and we're so busy trying to fulfill our task that we're not valuing the people that are there for the task. Paul said this, 2 Thessalonians, for even when we, when we with you, we gave you this rule. If a man will not work, he will not eat. And this is ingrained in our American system because in the colonies, the first governor preached this. He saw this verse and he said, no longer am I going to let those wealthy people not work. We're going to make the wealthy and the poor work side by side to make sure we survive. And so as Americans, we know that if you don't work, you don't we're very driven but we take it to an extreme. It says, we hear some among you are idle. They're not busy. They're busy bodies. I love that verse. I lived in the great outdoors. Somebody came to me one day and they said, you know what we call that where everybody's a busy body? I said, no. They said, old people with nothing to do. I said, you call that? I said, why is that? Because they don't have anything to do, so they just complain about everybody else. So sometimes you just have to find something to do, but the truth is, why are you doing it? Such people we command and urge in the Lord to settle down and earn the bread they eat. So the Bible encourages us to work, but it's the why of the work. Are we working so we can feel significant and feel it's important? What will happen if you only work to do that is you'll work too much, and the, the task will become more important than the people. So let me ask you this. Is there anything you're doing that God didn't intend for you to do? You have to have faith in letting God help set your priorities. We have to take a time out. Parents, sometimes that time out that you think is for your kids is really for you. When you say, go to your room, by the way, you don't have to argue with them anymore. People say, well, my kid won't go to his room. <coughs> easy peasy. Uh, go to your room. I'm not going to my room. No problem. We're just going to turn the internet off. <laughs> just like your car. <laughs> right? I mean, we have so much technology now, it's easy to punish kids. By the way, when you go to punish your children, do it in increments. Don't, don't bring the principle in first thing. Don't go heavy first. Go light first. Let's see if they respond. Don't just go crazy. But those things, like a timeout, that could be for you. You send your child to their room, guess what? You don't have five minutes. <laughs> and, and you know what? You don't have to clean during that five minutes if you don't want to. You can stop for just a minute. Maybe the best sleep you've gotten all week. I, I had some people tell me that was the best sleep I've gotten all week. I'm like, oh, stop. <laughs> By the way, sometimes I don't know if the sermon is good or you just had a lot of good coffee. I mean, it's, 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 there's no, what God does, He only has to tell you one thing to change your life during any sermon. It doesn't have to come from me. You know, grow with my values and everything. <laughs> so, more is better. We don't want to be lazy. Number three, this is probably should have been number one. We want the approval of others. Because we fear not being loved. Paul said this in Galatians 1. Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I was still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. So no matter what you're doing, you and I have to remember who we're serving. 
when your kids don't respond the right way, your job's not to get your kids to like you. It's to love your kids and to take God's love and love your kids. That boss who you don't get along with, your job's not to please that boss. Your job's to please God. So if you're spiteful in your work, guess what? It's God you have to deal with, not that boss. He may never know, or she may never know, what you're doing. By the way, I had a spiteful moment yesterday. Can I tell you that? It has nothing to do with the sermon. I have not used this in any sermon. I came back, and my, my neighbor had a huge dog, and he left a smiley face in my yard. Literally a smiley face. And I got it up in a garbage bag. Can I tell you what I was tempted to do? <laughs> I need a paper bag, some matches. <laughs> but, but here's what I did. I said, what's more important? My comfort or my relationship with that neighbor? did go to church, he'd have a bag burned. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Listen to Jesus' schedule. You think your schedule's bad? Listen to Jesus' schedule. Mark 1. That evening after sunset, people brought to Jesus, listen to this, all the sick and demon-possessed. Imagine tonight you go home, and all of a sudden, you open your door. By the way, this is before air conditioning. You open your door and all town, look, just your block has lined up. They either have the flu or they're crazy. And they're coming to ask you to help them. I'm running away. I'm hiding. I'm like the cranks where they open the windows and they go, oh, close the window. You have no idea what I'm talking about. I mean, I mean this is seriously under pressure. All right, so the whole town gathered at the door. And Jesus, listen, healed many. It doesn't say he healed all. He healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he wouldn't let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Listen to what happened the next day. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went to a solitary place where he prayed. Now listen. If we did something that was so important as change a town, we would wake up the next day and say, how can I continue to do that? But Jesus knew his priority first was his time with God and spending time with God, and that's where he got power to live. That's where he got the peace to live. That's how the Holy Spirit continued to use Jesus, continued to God, continued to give him direction. And yet we get so busy, if that had been us, we'd got up the next day and got right back to work. Take a few minutes every day. If you do nothing else this year, take a few minutes extra every day to spend time in God's Word. To spend time praying. We have daily bread that are on the desk back there, uh, the information table. You can open them up and, and it'll give you a couple verses for the day, a little story. There's an app. The app is on your phone. You actually can download it. If you're really, your eyes are real tired of the morning, you can push play and these people with awesome voices will come and go, today's daily bread. Hey, how's it going? Uh, you know, and, and it's like, oh, these people talk really loud. And then, and then the girl, I can't do a girl's voice, so I'm not going to try. But you know, she comes on, and today, too. So the guy's like, hey. And you're like, wow, that's awesome. I never heard the Bible read like that. Hey. In the beginning, God created it. And then, uh, anyway, so, um, so, yeah, so you get to read it. And, and the thing is, spend time slowing down and listen just a few minutes. Why? Just so you can say you had a quiet time and check it off? No, no. It's so that during the day when life it's busy. God will say, remember my voice. Just like you heard my voice in the morning, you can hear it in the storm. Just like you heard my voice when you were still, you can hear it in the busy. So take time, because here's what's going to happen as soon as your day starts, and you try to sit down and have a quiet time. Simon and his companions went to look for him. Every problem you have, as soon as you sit down, are going to go looking for you. Things you haven't thought about in weeks. Things you need to clean. Things you need to put away. That Christmas tree. Those lights that are still in your house. You know, all that. As soon as you sit down, it's all going to jump on you. And you're going to have a tendency to jump. Hey, get a piece of paper and write it down and say, I'll come back to you in a minute. And then it continues. Simon says, everyone is looking for you. By the way, it says, they exclaimed. So they all looked at him and said, everybody's looking at you. Basically, Jesus, what's your problem? We don't have time for you to sit still. And in your mind, it won't be other people most likely. In your mind, you will hear that. 
And if you sit down and have a quiet time, your phone will ding. Ding. We've gotten so bad with our phones that they actually say when you hear it ding and you don't answer it, you actually get negative emotions. And when you look at it, you actually get dopamine. You actually get like, oh, oh that's such bad news. Oh. Because we feel like we have to get in on everything. And so when they found, everyone is looking for you. Listen to this, though. Jesus replied, let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages so I can preach there also. That's why I've come. You know why Jesus, listen, there were people whose kids were not healed that night. And didn't get healed the next day because Jesus went somewhere else. Why? Because Jesus wasn't there to please people. How do you know what you're supposed to do? You have to listen to God. If you listen to everybody, you'll never get it done. Did you know somebody comes to me with a new ministry idea every single week at this church? Can you imagine? And by the way, usually they want me to do it. And I always say, well, how are you going to start that? And then they go, me? How about your secretary? Is there anyone that you need to stop trying to please? Christians, although they hear many sermons, make but slow advances in their divine life. Why? Because they neglect their closet and do not thoroughly meditate on God's word. Charles Spurgeon. So we think more is better. We don't want to be lazy. We want the approval of number four. We don't want to be still. When we get in a hurry, we don't pay attention to important things. An elderly Florida lady did her shopping. Upon returning to her car, found four males in the act of leaving with her vehicle. She dropped her shopping bag and drew her handgun, proceeding to scream at the top of her voice, I have a gun, and I know how to use it. Get out of the car. The four men didn't wait for a second invitation. They got out and ran like mad. The lady, somewhat shaken, then proceeded to load her shopping bag into the back of her car and get into the driver's seat. She was so shaken, she could not get her keys into the ignition. She tried and tried, and then it dawned on her why. A few minutes later, she found her own car, parked four or five spaces in the town. She loaded her bag into the car and then drove to the police station that was close by. The sergeant to whom she told the story here, he tore himself in two with laughter. He pointed to the other end of the counter where four pale men were reporting a carjacking by a mad, elderly woman, described as white, less than five feet tall, glasses, curly white hair, and carrying a large handgun. <laughs> When we get busy and we get wound up, we forget what matters. And we forget the people that matter. And we get so busy and so angry trying to get to our task or worried about what somebody else might think that we don't bless the people who are the closest to us. Mark, uh, excuse me, Psalm 46.10. He says, be still and know that I am God. I'll be exalted among the nations. I'll be exalted in the earth. Sometimes we just have to get still. Take five minutes. Minutes, take one minute. Set an alarm on your phone to remind you to get still. Set an alarm on your phone to remind you to have a daily quiet time. Spend a few minutes every day and just get still. I know it's hard to get still sometimes in life. It's hard and busy. But take a moment to get still and just say, thank you, God. Go outside if you can and look around and say, God, thank you. I went to get a cup of coffee this morning with a squirrel outside the window. I said, thank you, Lord. And then somebody gave me a squirrel pen. There's all these squirrels in my head. Mark 135, I want to remind you again, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went to a solitary place where he prayed. Not because he didn't have plenty to do, but because he had plenty to do. Can you commit to a time to be still with God each day? If you don't do anything else this year, I encourage you, make that a priority. Put it in your phone, put it on your calendar. I'm going to spend time with God. And if you don't spend time with God one day, he's not up there with a checklist going, well, you didn't. It actually hurts you. You want those moments. It will change your family relationship. It will change your work. You'll learn to look people in the eyes when you learn to get still. You'll learn that even when you're busy and somebody says something to you, Jesus never went through a crowd and said, what are you doing? Jesus did not sit with the woman in the well and said, could you hurry up and give me some water? Come on, disciples. We've got a schedule to keep. We've got to run to Jerusalem. No. People could cry out. People could reach out to him. And guess what? He stopped because he knew that getting there wasn't what was important. On the journey with him. We need to love God and love people. Life's about fear of faith. Fear makes us want stuff, not to be seen as lazy, to try to please others and stay busy. Faith says, God, I'm going to trust you. And when I trust you, I can love people better. Let's go to the Lord in prayer today. Father, thank you for this time today. I thank you for this morning. Lord, I pray if anyone here doesn't know you, that today, after the service, they could come and say, Eric, I want to give my life to you. 
The father, I pray for that one who maybe hasn't been spending time with you. They've just been rushing through life. Maybe in that rush, they've been hurting the people near them or ignoring the people near them. I pray, Father, in our busyness that we can put everything aside and quit listening to the voices that say that we're needed all the time and instead get still and hear you so that we know exactly what you want us to do. Father, I pray we be a church that's full of love and forgiveness. Father, that we're full of your spirit in each moment that we could love you and love the people around us because we spent time with you. So thank you for this time this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to do a formal invitation, but if you want to give your life.